Congratulations, that's not right. I'm just, I'm just gonna delete that. Because I don't know what we're talking about. Boom, problem solved. <laughs> What did you, what did you do to fix or break? I, oh, I didn't. Oh, I have to have to do the thing. Is it over? Okay, it's over. All right. So I corrected your name and I got rid of economics of constellations under the thing. Cause okay, great. I, I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. This is always weird. So yeah, we're we're live again. Yay! Um, yay! Hey everybody. Host band. What? What are you doing to me, Dave? Your language, you can't have that. In oh, I was off air, I thought. <laughs> Host Oops. band. Yeah, we're supposed to keep it family friendly. My, my nephew will occasionally catch parts of the stream and he'll yell at me when I do cuss. <gasps> There's nothing like getting yelled at by a 12-year-old. All right, I think I fixed all the things, Pamela. Pamela is back, so it will really be Pamela. Yeah. <laughs> And, and you, you're going to have a telescope, Fraser? No. No. Absolutely oh, not. wait. Fraser, have you seen the Stellina? Yes. What are your thoughts on the Stellina? Uh, it's amazing. Why is it amazing? Well, okay. So um, the, the, like, the problem with telescopes like this is that they're just so complicated. It's just a complete pain to take outside, set up, try to uh, polar align, all that kind of stuff. And you just never do because you just don't want to go through the misery of getting the telescope set up. And so the telescope just sits there and collects dust. The telescope has a lot of dust on it. Okay. Um, and the, with the Stellina, you just take it outside, you just set it up, and, and you just say, go. And it figures out where it is. It takes pictures of the night sky, figures out where it is pointing in the sky, and then you point it at an object and it just starts taking pictures. Right. And it's, uh, it's, it's incredible. The problem is that the pictures that it takes are, you know, meh. Okay. <laughs> right. So, so it's like for the amount of money that you spend on it, you could buy a telescope like that, that you'll never use. So it's a. Okay. So here's my take on it. Cause we did an unboxing last night. Yes. I know this is supposed to be you and Pamela, but I, I want to talk about the Stellina for a little bit. Yeah. I, I just did the unboxing. I didn't set it up because we have Eddie and uh, mm -hmm. I was afraid of Eddie knocking down a very expensive telescope that portal we gun. have to, yeah, a portal gun. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. That thing is heavy. I know it's like a small dog in a small yeah. space. Yeah. It's heavy. Um, and just, I, I had problems with how they use the word accessible because to me accessible means that um, people with varying levels of eyesight or hearing or I, I think it things. is for that. I, I think I, it is. You you think it is accessible for that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Totally. Yeah. Because because you do it on your phone, right? Right. So so you don't try to look through an eyepiece. You don't have to have any like. You don't have to climb up a ladder. You don't have to bend, you know, into a contort yourself to be able to look through the eyepiece of the telescope. You just sit somewhere comfortable, control with your phone, and the pictures show up. And the okay. pictures are are good. Like, um, uh, you know, they're fine. The pictures <laughs> they're are fine. fine. Yeah. I, I also saw that you could download like the raw fits files, which I was like, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, you get, on the one hand, you get this this constantly updating image that has sort of better and better. The more time you give it, the right. more it just does noise reduction and just keeps making the picture better and better. Um, but the, the, and then you can get access to all the raw data, all the raw, all the raw pictures that it's taking and then use that as well. So, so it was effortless to use, absolutely effortless. Like you take a thing, you set it up, you press go and within three minutes you're starting to take pictures okay and and so there you know i mean <clears throat> for sure accessible in the if you have problems with vision if you have problems with mobility this is definitely a great machine for you to use but also just accessibility like like it's accessible like you will be able to use it this is an amazing machine like you know when jupiter's out and you set up your telescope and you're like hey everybody let's look at jupiter and they're like oh that's really cool that's amazing i can totally see jupiter in the moons and you're like let's look at saturn and you're like yeah and you show them, oh the yeah, rings and, then it takes and you say look at the moon and then you're like and they're like what else you got and you're like 
I got nothing else. There's nothing else to look at, right? <laughs> Jupiter, Saturn, Moon, we're done. Yeah. Um, there's nothing, right? Right. Because the rest of it is like tiny, faint stuff that you can't see with your eyes. It's it's hard to find. You got to know exactly where you're pointing. You got to spend your whole night aligning the telescope, and 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 in the end, people look at it and go, "Wait, is it that fuzzy thing there?" <laughs> fair because most of my time I will admit that you know, most of like, yes that's it most I will admit that most of my time looking through a telescope and this is going to panic people so I'm just going to say right now proper filters were used yeah most of my time looking through a telescope has been at the sun so yeah once it's all yes. set up and sun if you have moon tracking, yeah. yeah sun moon Jupiter Saturn that's it <laughs> that's all there is to look at with a telescope like, and I mean, look at with your eyeballs, yeah. right? And, and like, that is the dirty secret of this whole business is that you're, that nobody, um, there's nothing else to see, okay. right? Uh, Mercury is a tiny dot. Mars is a little red smear, you know, smear. Uh, Venus, come on. Like, you even send <laughs> spacecraft to Venus, and you don't get a chance to see anything, right? Right. So, uh, okay, globular clusters are, are great. Right. Um, uh, you know, emission nebula, uh, uh, reflection nebula, forget it. Uh, galaxies, you can't see them. Okay. So you need to take a picture. And so you need to go into astrophotography. If you need to go into astrophotography, then you've got to wrestle with a monster, right? Yeah. 80-pound thing that will, won't, you're like, hold on, I just got to find the Polaris again. And you're like, wait a second, it's over there. Why isn't it turning? Why isn't it working? Okay. And then you get your camera to go. That's ridiculous. So, so this, this, the Stellina will take perfectly serviceable pictures where you go, hey, let's look at M59. And then you're like, beep, beep, beep. and then you show people like, look at it, it's showing up. Here's M59 on my screen. I could show you my pictures of, of, uh, of, of the Whirlpool Galaxy at some point. They're okay. fine. I like it. Okay, you you have convinced me because yesterday I was just like, this is a fancy camera. But you but, didn't even use it. Yeah, no, you're right. I didn't even okay. use it. Because yeah, so it is not about the pictures. It is about walking outside, setting the thing up, and just going, show me pictures, and it just does it. Have you used it with... I think another issue I had with it is that if you were going to have like guest observers is that everybody had to download the app and create right. an account, which I was like, right. really just to be a guest observer. But then I also saw that it would run on an iPad and I'm like, okay, you could do that as one guest. That's just a generic guest and pass it around, which not the greatest, but better than a gazillion people creating an account and downloading an app for maybe just a night. I don't understand. Like, like I think the way the way it works is you stand around the telescope, drinking right. your hot chocolate right. while while but you take turns picking objects, and then it shows up on someone's phone. Yeah, but there are there's supposed to be a way where it can show up on multiple phones all at once. That is seems. What silly. I have se yeah, because I was like, really? Yeah. I mean, on yeah. one device, I'm okay. On the other devices, I'm not okay. And I'm also used to thinking of, let's go observing in like places where there's not internet. And me, who runs out of data, in yeah. a, you know, let's say I'm at a star party and this thing is set up. Um, you got a bunch of people looking at their bright phones. My in my head, I was like, you have a bunch of people looking at their bright phones at a star party, ruining their night vision, trying to look. Well, at that's because there's nothing to look through. at. Remember? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. So so they will they will have already decided there's nothing else to look at after they've seen the four the three things. Okay. And then they, and then they're gonna go and like go turn on their phones anyway because now they're bored. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah, no, it's a it's a completely different experience, right? Right. Which is it takes away it it takes away all the misery of using <laughs> the telescope, a, a telescope, right? <laughs> to, okay. And it lets you see a thousand things. Okay. Poorly. So what it sounds like in order for me to do a proper review is I need to just be dropped somewhere with a satellite or not a satellite with a telescope and an instruction manual like a. a traditional one and then this and yeah, be like yeah, yeah figure it out yeah, annie yeah well it's not even that i mean 
definitely take the thing, set it up, install the software on your phone, pair it with the telescope while you're right. inside and it's daytime, right? So you've got that all going. Right. And then when it's night, and it doesn't matter, right? If there's light pollution, just, you know, the moon is up, who cares, right? <laughs> just take it outside, light haze in the sky, not your problem. And then just take <laughs> just take a picture, okay. right? Okay. Um, and then it's fun. It's super fun. And okay. you get, you're like, yeah, that's a, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to find some pictures of it. Um, of some of the pictures that I took with it. Uh, I've got some pictures that I took. I don't know why it does this. I took some pictures. Because it hates you. Yeah. Because well, technology Google, no, hates Google, us. Google. Yeah. Well, I mean, all technology hates us. The universe is trying to kill us. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So anyway, th th the point is pictures are fine. Pictures are fine. Okay. Right. Okay. Like, like you're not going to get on a pod. Right. 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 Oh and my so, goodness. But, yeah. No. Right. But also, you know, using your telescope as a place to hang your laundry is not going to get you on a pod either. No. And that's what most telescopes get used for. <laughs> they, like telescopes and and uh, uh, exercise machines. Not going right? to lie, there are I think three telescopes at Ward Beecher Planetarium. I think there's four now. Yeah. And the only one that I know that I've set up more than once was the solar scope. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, like okay. Saturn never fails to disappoint, ne never fails to excite people, right? Right. Like every time you show someone with Saturn it is the greatest. And then you're like, you want to see Jupiter? And you're like, wow, this is blowing my mind. I want to buy a telescope. <laughs> yeah, and then you can show people the moon, Saturn, and Jupiter. Yeah, like a champion. I am also yeah. just spoiled and want to just stay yeah. inside and let other people take the pictures at night when it's cold out. Yeah. So, right. so I think the, the kind of person that the Stellina is good for is somebody who um, is tired of looking at those three things, hates, tro like is supremely un, uh, underwhelmed by looking at, you know, Andromeda or M33 or right. uh, the Ring Nebula in their telescope. Ring Nebula looks pretty great. Um, so they've just like they've had enough of that and they want to get into astrophotography, but they also are not organized and willing to put in the pain and misery to set up a proper astrophotography rig because yeah. it is not for the faint of heart. Yeah, that's keep right. That's keep that's what I keep seeing is. Yeah, but also, yeah, you've got to be yeah. really dedicated. It is like it is like trying to learn. It's like trying to it's like buying a 3D printer. You know, everybody's bought a 3D printer and then like the misery they go through to make it just like make some little, you know, cat doodad. Right. Yeah. Right. Same thing. Like it's a serious hobby that requires a lot of finicky work. You, but the, I think here's what I think the future is with the Stellina is this. It is a mount. So they should build a mount that that has all the plate finding pattern matching built into the mount itself mm -hmm. and you put whatever you want on top of it right yeah you put whatever telescope you've got on top of it and the key is that it's the mount that does all the work it it knows where it is it knows right. it's on the sky it finds the location you tell it what you want it to find and it just finds it and it doesn't take any there's no such thing as polar alignment that is those are words that no one will ever have to use again but the problem is then you get that right now you've got you know, I think it's like a 70 millimeter or an 80 millimeter apochromatic refractor in the Stellina, which is which is a good little, you know, and it's got a, mm -hmm. a fairly small little camera built in. But again, doesn't matter. None of that matters because, you know, it's what it is, is that it is accessible. And in, the, in that you will access pictures of the sky. <laughs> I like how you use the air quotes. Yeah. No, yeah. I like the idea of it being a mount and then doing all the work for you. Because to me, yeah. that's, then I'm like, okay, <clears throat> that I think that would make yeah. me a thousand percent happier. Because and be like, okay, yeah. you use whatever telescope you want to use. Yeah. Configure Stellina to do your thing. Put it on this mount and go. Yeah. But it is like saying, you know, is this is this a good camera? <laughs> right. I'm like, right. It could be. Is this a good camera? What do you want to do with the camera? Yeah. And so the good camera is the one that you use. Right. And so the good telescope, the good, especially the good astrophotography rig is the one you're going to use. And if you're going to use a Stellina, because it's, because 
you've like you've got no reason to not take pictures. Right. I, I in fact, you almost have to it. take pictures with this stuff. <laughs> Yeah, well, you because you're going to take them all. You're going to get beautiful shots of the right. Orion Nebula. No, you're going to get acceptable shots of the Orion <laughs> Nebula. You're going to get acceptable <laughs> shots of 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 Andromeda. You're going to get acceptable shots of M33. Stuff that you will never see through a regular telescope. Okay, so. okay, I, you have convinced me. I, Good, I, I, Pamela, yeah. you are totally up now for real. Okay. Now okay. that now that I no longer have deep loathing for Stellina. Yeah, why would you load like anything that just you know, beep boop and it I, finds the sky? That's the best. I because I I just graded against the the word accessible. That's all. That's all. I think that's oh. what it was. Okay. Yeah. All right. In that you can access the pictures that you took. <laughs> think of it that way. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here's Pamela somewhere. Yeah. Are you ready for real? Uh, uh, Zeno SW says, "Can I use a Pixel Four with that?" I can't hear you anymore, Fraser, at all. By the way. Oh, it's fine. I, I I'm talking she to. Was I'm talking. More ready than I was. So. Um, I'm just answering questions, but you can't even hear that. So. Do 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 do. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Things are happening. All right. Um, Bye, Fraser. See you later. Okay. Um, I can still hear you, and I'm just changing the name. Okay. Well, I'm going to answer a bunch of these questions that are on the, no. on the chat. Uh, oh, so okay, Zeno yeah. SW says, "Can I use You're the right. Pixel Four with that?" No, you can't use like, anything. It, it had the camera is completely built into the Stellina, so you can't access it at all. It's just right in there. But the Pixels can't. These Pixel phones are actually terrific okay. astrophotography uh, phones. They're the they're by far the best phone that's ever been made for astrophotography. So they have a special astrophotography mode on them that you can just take pictures. I, and I hope I can find I my sure. shots. Uh, I took a bunch of pictures. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you won't be able to see it on the through through this. But so you go outside, put your uh, put your phone. I've got a little tripod thing. So I use it like a uh, like a gorilla pod, or and then I put my phone on the gorilla pod. It's actually in its astrophotography position right now, right? And then you point it at the sky, and then you put it in the night mode version, and then it will recognize that it's that it's being held still, and it's looking at the sky, and then it will go into astrophotography mode. That's cool. I yeah. had no idea. Yeah. So you go into uh, so you go into night sight mode. So here's me. So it's right there. I don't know if, I don't know if this is gonna work. Put it into night sight mode. Right. And then, but when it's outside and it's dark, like night sight mode on its own is already pretty amazing. Like it takes right. just incredible pictures of at night. It's by far the best low light camera in any phone at all. And this is the Pixel 3a. Pixel 4 is even better. So this one will do a one minute stacked exposure. Oh, good Lord. Yeah. On its own. So it'll it, so you take a picture of the sky and it will take a picture of say the Milky Way that actually shows the dust lanes and stuff in the Milky Way on the phone on its own. And then you can do with the Pixel 4 it'll do a 4 minute I think stacked exposure just you press one button. So if you're at all into astrophotography the the now it's the phones that are now That's... sort of making this all accessible because they just, it's the same technology, right? It just takes a four minute exposure. And yeah. then it accounts for the motion of the sky. It's stacking up, you know, it's properly realigning things and stacking it all up and producing an image. If you go and do a search on Google for Pixel 4 astrophotography, it's kind of stunning what people are able to do wow. with this. Yeah. So yeah, there you go. So it's a three minute exposure, says uh, Zeno SW. Um, that that is just awesome. So I'm I'm gonna pause for a minute and I just wanna say thank you to Andrea, to our instro, and to all the other people who have been donating in the past couple of hours. Um in the final hour of our event, which is the next hour, we are 38 minutes away from entering that last hour. We are going to ask all the mods who've been working in the Hangout Mods back channel, as well as all of our remote location staff to join us in Zoom. Um, and together we will 
celebrate all the things that we've done. We are currently sitting at eight thousand fifty three dollars and eight cents, which is not a palindrome, people. It is it's not a, a palindrome. It's a huge jump from what it was before. It yeah, we're doing really good. I would love to see us hit ten thousand by the end of the forty hours. Um, I don't know if we can do it, but let's try. So I'm going to send out a tweet saying, we met our matching goal. New challenge. Can we hit 10K now at 8053.08 by midnight? That is two months of our cost. Two, mo two months of CosmoQuest in the bag. That's a bad phrase. Two months of CosmoQuest here to science you. Please help streamlabs.com slash CosmoQuestX. All right, you guys are amazing. Let's see what we're capable of as a community. Um, I will need to sync the bits again at some point. Um, sync the bits? Yeah, so, so we have money coming in in three different ways. Um, so, so two of the ways that they're coming in are part of, of Twitch, where we have people subscribing to our channel mm. and uh, we have people giving us bits, which uh, if you're watching on Twitch, you'll see little stars appear on screen periodically. Um, that's people essentially dropping money in our hat saying, hey, we like what you're doing. Whereas subs are more like the Patreon model. It's just called something different on twitch someone's gonna have to show me this bit thing in action can somebody donate some bits so i can see how this works let's I'll see wait. that unicorn snowman again people someone throw a unicorn <gasps> there we go oh that's cute um so yeah no no uh no telescope tonight it is uh cloudy and I was talking to Nancy uh, today. She was not telling you the bad news. No, what happened? Oh, it's just cloudy and windy and, uh, and bad weather there. Yeah, potential. It's because we all want rain. to look at Betelgeuse. Yeah, it should explode <laughs> all already. All the bits yeah. keep coming in. All the yeah. bits keep coming in. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Now I understand. Well, I've, maybe I've only like half understand. So maybe people can just try one more time. Just so I totally <laughs> understand. <sighs> <laughs> so Bill Nash is saying, I brought my telescope with me to Phoenix since it's new yeah. moon this week, but the whole Southwest is covered yeah. in... Hi, hi, hi. Okay. I have an Australian Shepherd who clearly wowzers. Hi. Personal space much? <laughs> Not for, yeah, they're in your personal space. <laughs> oh wow we just got a uh, hundred and two dollars and ten cents from bird to brain oh did i, read I see that another palindrome right? i see oh oh we are at eight one five five one eight palindrome brought back thank you <clears throat> thank you what Uncle Bill Drew and saying I'm so good at this. Well, I feel bad because Pamela says that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not the, I'm not. The, someone said this in the chat. I think it was uh, Keeper of Maps that I'm not the fundraiser. I'm the fundraiser. So I'm terrible for uh, for for getting money. So what are we going to do then? Since the weather is uh, is uh, crap. So I'm I'm I'm. Sorry, I three screens. You know how this life works. I was checking yeah. in on the mods while checking in on the chat while listening to you. And also contemplating, I really want Betelgeuse to explode. Why must all the telescopes be clouded in? Well, not around the whole planet. I know, I know. But like, I want to go outside, look up, and see it fainter than Aldebaran. This is what I want to see. It might be clear here. 
So have you looked? No. <laughs> I'm here. I'm just... We just got a hundred dollars and one cent from Bad Panda Bear. You are amazing that's awesome thank you so much and you mistyped your username so you're now bad panna bear (laughs) bad panna bear Bear. without the window Um, we are no longer a palindrome though yeah that's the downside so someone's got to fix it with i don't know whatever (laughs) is uh yeah uh, challenge may 19 um (laughs) so so what, one of the, the shows that we're going to be doing is things that we're looking forward to um, in 2020 astronomically. Mm-hmm. And when we do astronomy cast, we usually don't go into all the stupid stuff. Like, it would be awesome if we finally found a world that had uh, biosignatures in its atmosphere. And that that's not the kind of thing we can legitimately look forward to because we don't quite have the tech yet to do that. <laughs> Well, but- Cheops could kind of maybe, <laughs> right? It's a, it's a, it can observe atmospheres. Okay. So um, maybe it's the machine that'll do it. So, so as, as we've discussed, spacecraft are dead to me until they've had first light. And I thought this, it was until they've launched. Until they, well, launched successfully. Um, well, Kiops is launched successfully. So I now need to read about it. We will be prepping it for next week's daily space. Okay. Um, but I haven't done that prep yet. So I, I know nothing about this mission at all. I other love than it. By its ESA. So tell yeah. us about this mission. Sure. Um, so what Kiops is, is Kiops is not a planet hunter. And it's funny. So I, I, you know, I use the term planet hunter a lot. And this is not a planet hunter. It's a planet characterizer. So it is not going to find any planets. It's incapable of finding new planets. It's only capable of observing existing transits and then cr- doing really good uh, data on it. I, people are telling me it's Cheops and people are telling me it's Cheops. I don't know what to say anymore. Someone's <laughs> going to have to decide. I, I pronounce Sharon you know, Pluto and Sharon based on, on Alan Stern. So, so Fair. if anyone ever complains about the way I pronounce it, I say, that's the way Alan Stern does it. And he's the, you know, he and uh, led the team to send a spacecraft to take a picture of it. So I feel like that's fair, but apparently so- Cheops, Cheops is the same is the name of the Egyptian pronounced like the Egyptian dynasty. And and it probably all depends on someone's origins. Uh, my my husband it has a uh, French Canadian last name, and I I went to his little sister's wedding in Montreal, so French Canada. Yeah. And I was like, I'm finally going to learn how to pronounce my husband's name. I couldn't take my husband's name because I can't say it correctly. What, what's what's the, how do you say it again? Or well, that's the problem. So I'm going to type it into chat. It's Q U E V I L L O N, and the the Americanized version of pronouncing this is Quivalon. And and I I yeah. assumed I assumed we have a puppy. Um, <laughs> and he got Stella down here. Sorry. Um. So so I assumed that if I went to his little sister's wedding that like there'd be consistent pronunciation. No, every single person in the family pronounced the name differently. Yeah. And so it was everything from a very nasal French Kevion to the bastardized Western Canadian, same as America, Quivalon. Yeah. And, and I hang up the phone on anyone who asks to talk to Mrs. K villain. K villain. <laughs> Are you kidding? So, That's like you want to talk longer. Alan. Villain. <laughs> Miss villain here. I would uh I would go with K Vion. Right. And and so it's just the challenge of what exactly is it? Um but but 
it's like hey. GIF versus GIF. Yes, yeah. I know it's graphics versus peanut butter, but it's it's all allowed. We all know what we're all talking about. Yeah. So. Um. So so so. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Chaos is um. Uh. Yeah. Planet cat characterizer. I think it's characterizing exoplanet observatory space. Uh, character. Anyway, um, and and so it will be observing all of the known transiting planets, and then um, trying to help just more accurately figure out the radius, figure out the the transit time. And then it should be able to, for some of them, actually be able to detect if there's an atmosphere and help characterize the atmosphere. So, so it on it could f start to study some of the atmospheres of some of these planets, but it's a super long shot. It's not the machine to do it. The one that we want is going to be um, Ariel, which is okay. launching in twenty twenty eight. Have they begun construction? Of Ariel, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And Ariel is going to be launching with the um, ec the interstellar object interceptor, extra extra solar interceptor. So they're going they're building a spacecraft that's going to try to intercept the next Oumuamua or Borisov. Right. Right. That, yeah. That's a cool. That's mission. going with it. So yeah. I. I had a horrifying realization earlier today. You and I are getting older. Well, speak for yourself. <laughs> and a part of this realization is, I, I think we would both really love to see a Neptune orbiter because it, it has Triton there, a captured Kuiper mm -hmm. belt bigger than Pluto. It has other moons. It has exciting stuff and things. And... That would be awesome, but no such mission is currently planned, funded, under development. And if you want to put something in orbit, and and we talked about this earlier, I'm rehashing this, aren't I? Um, it's it's gonna be stupid hard to slow down enough, and and I'm just worried that if they launch such a spacecraft, we like won't still be recording by the time the spacecraft gets there. So ESA, as part of their 2019, 2020 mission plans, have built a document reference mission for going to the ice giants. So they are medium serious about this. But, you know, when it's actually going to launch, you're looking at mid 2030s, you know, maybe late 2020s, won't get to Neptune until the mid 2030s. Yeah, we'll still be alive, like healthy living. 2030s so. would put it like a good 13 years older than we are now. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll still be around. We'll be in our 50s. Yeah. yeah. Maybe 60s. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, the thing is, is like, like it, it's kind of cr incredible when you think about how long we have been doing this job for. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so I think that the that we've, we're as excited about this as we were when we started. And we're good for, I'm good for decades. Like, I'm not going anywhere. This is, this is my career for life. We are more sarcastic. I think this really? is an improvement. Okay, I am more sarcastic. So you know what's happened to me is I've become the grim realist. So you know, like back when we started Astronomy Cast, and I was all like, "Hey, but why couldn't we like, but like, what if we colonize yeah, yes. the universe and stuff, right?" And yeah. you know, and and I think there is this really interesting journey of knowledge that people take. They start out because mm -hmm. they come from. Star Wars and Star Trek and right. Stargate and it's telling us this this amazing future where traveling in space is as easy as traveling by sea it's sort of the same but you know you can go in any direction and it's so not and and 
and you learn what's true and what's not and you become like really excited about the just about the nuance the incremental improvements and so i find now that i'm a lot less interested now say however many years we've been doing astronomy cast to talk about dyson spheres and terraforming and all that kind of stuff right and you can see new new people showing up on the scene they gravitate towards the let's talk about Dyson spheres and let's talk about right. the um, the sea dragon and let's talk about, right? And then after a while, you you sort of settle down because, because it's all fantasy, right? And you know, the Orion dr dropping nuclear bombs out the back to accelerate and busted <laughs> ramjets and you know what I mean? And like after a while, you're just like, I like an ion engine that uses krypton gas instead of xenon gas. Right, right. right? Well, and, and the thing that really gets me is, is so we're both Gen Xers. And, and so we both have one character out of the Breakfast Club that probably fits us better than another. And we're that in-between generation where we're not totally digital natives, but we grew up always being aware of, of technology and this future. But it was like, the universe kept taking our toys away from us. Mm -hmm. And and so as as an astronomer, I can't tell you how much of my career has been spent sitting at tables with men regaling me of where they were when they watched the Apollo launches while I look around going, why am I still the youngest in the room? And the millennials are finally catching up. Yeah. But it's like, where's my something truly awesome where's where's jwst it's still not there we do finally have gravity waves i spent many i spent over a decade bitter about ligo i'm finally yeah. starting to get over my bitterness um uh, we have rockets that land on their launch pad that's true that we still don't have jetpacks but that's what well, we right? do actually we're starting to have jetpacks we're getting there it's the, that rocket is so cool. Although I have to say, yeah. I, I love that Star that that SpaceX embraces their failure because the way the Starliner pressurization test failed is my favorite modern day failure. Did you see that video? Are you talking? Hold on a second. Are you talking about the the crew not Starliner start start? Uh, the SLS. No. No, no, sorry. I'm renaming uh, Starliner and Starship should not have names that close. Starship, when it had its pressurization failure on the right, ground. Right, and blew the top. And, and, and almost, out the bottom. It just blew and, yeah, both and ends. And almost broke its altitude record. Parts of it did. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. But it, it reminded me of that, that thing you use when you're lighting your barbecue that you pile the coal in and you ignite and it goes whoosh if you put too much igniter fluid in it. Don't do yeah. that. That's like carcinogens, people. Don't do that. It's fine. Don't do yeah. it. Um, I love that they allow these failures to happen because that yeah. was a fabulous moment. But but we are starting to get these massive innovations as new people enter the field and think out of the box. Now, we, what... and I mean, I've been saying this now for, for several years now that we are truly in the golden age. That yeah. we, up until SpaceX, right, 2009, or wherever, when it was in SpaceX, made their first successful launch of their Falcon 1 rocket. That was the first time yeah. that a commercial company has ever launched an orbital rocket using its own money yeah. right like that was the first time and now here we are a decade later and those things land precisely many times on or near their landing pad their launch pads we have and not just one company right yeah Sneeze. I, not just one company we have multiple companies we have blue origin that's, that's chasing their their you know chasing quickly we've got small sat launchers like rocket labs we've got um just a revolution across the 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 sphere on all of these different companies not to mention this new space race what's happening with india and china and europe 
Europe is, has got a more vibrant. I, I can see you wanting to talk. I'm just I'm on a roll here. Give me a second. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Europe has got just this incredible, vibrant series of missions that are going on that are just incredible. I've just I've never felt more excited about about what is going on in in both astronomy and space flight than I've ever been again in in all of my time of doing this. And I get more excited every day now going forward, which which is sort of it's like that return to that wide eyed optimist that I was. We spent a decade felt like in the, you know, yeah, in the, you know, in the dark. And now we're coming out yeah. the other side. And it is just it is so great. Okay, go. So so what amazes me is how quickly things have changed. I, I was rewatching with Skylius on her channel uh, the video of when uh, Bill Nye, uh, Phil, poor Phil, trying to moderate, as, as well as Neil deGrasse Tyson and Lawrence Krauss, were all on this panel about space exploration back in 2013. And, and at one point, one of the other panelists goes off on how there is no commercial reason to do space and like basically implying that commercial space was not going to be a thing because there wasn't an economic model for it. And I now look at our world and how it is it's the way of the future because everything we do yeah. is starting to rely on these technologies. And one of the things that, that has me currently, I have so many mixed emotions is, no, I don't have mixed emotions. I have strong emotions. Uh, with SLS, they're blowing through so much money, oh, yeah. talking about the pipe dream of, of, and they keep using the phrase, American made rocket made on American soil by Americans. Yeah. And I keep wondering, okay, yeah, so so Elon Musk was born in South Africa. Cool, cool. Yep. Grew up in Canada. But Boeing has plenty of non American born individuals who are citizens working at Boeing. Sure, yeah. Why isn't SpaceX like why don't we embrace this even though it's it's new tech? I'm not sure because Boeing is is Starliner just kind of that was sad. Yeah. Let's just leave it at that. And the way everyone's like, it was great. And now we're going to send humans. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, and with SpaceX, things didn't go right with a reused rocket during a test on the ground of the abort system. And they're like, we're going to do a lot more tests, people. Yes, that is, yes, yes, do that. Right. And I went to So, like, why does SLS age. still exist? Yes. Is, uh, yes. I can, yes. I can tell you, I yes. can tell you why, you know, I mean, right. Um, and it is, it is purely the, like, what are your choices, right? Okay. So, like, let's array, like, imagine you are the, the United States of America, the entity known as the United States of America, right? And yes. you've got the Apollo, let's go all the way back to the Apollo program. And you've got all these people and then you're wrapping up the moon mission. And then you're like, we're throwing away these rockets. We yeah. can't, that's stupid. We need to make this reusable. Let's develop a reusable rocket plane, something mm -hmm. that, that can be reused. That's the ne obviously reuses the next step. And so then they start to develop the space shuttle and they get to a certain yeah. point where other people jump on and they mess with the plan for what the space shuttle is going to be. And it tries to serve too many masters and the, you know, and the safety and the reusability doesn't achieve what, yeah. you know, because it had a lot of bad requirements thrown at it. It was grandpa's Apollo, pick truck yeah. that you can only the sort Apollo, of trust. The Apollo mission is the Apollos are all shut down. They move to the space shuttle. You got all these people working on it. And then the space shuttle is dangerous Two, yeah. two orbiters were destroyed, killing 14 astronauts. Right. So we know that that's too dangerous of a system to rely on for human beings. So they have to get out of the space shuttle. Well, they go back to the system that pretty much worked like a charm, which is rockets with capsules on top. Right. And you've got all these people. You've got tens of thousands of people that are working on the space shuttle program, and you've got to put them to work. So you put them to work building essentially – the SLS is the space shuttle. Yeah. It's just a different configuration of the space shuttle. You just, you take that main tank, 
the main engine, and then you put the rockets on the bottom, and then you put the boosters on the side, and you put your caps on the top. It is the space shuttle. And the and the expertise of all those people, all the contracts yeah. and all the lobbyists and all the and all of the political engagements is all still there. And there was no viable replacement. There's no, you know, the next goal is the moon. And there's no viable replacement. There's no viable heavy lift system, or there was no heavy lift system until like two years ago when yeah. the Falcon Heavy and the Falcon Heavy isn't even human rated. And so so these are your choices, right? Do you, as the United States, you know, do you just stop everything and then just like wait on Elon Musk to get it together? No. Do you stop everything and wait on wait on Jeff Bezos to get it together? No. no. Can't let all these people, right? Because that will just cause tons of damage to the political machinations and so right now until starship launches and launches safely and delivers the promise of reusability re reusable rocketry sls will continue and the moment starship is safe and successful and it does what it's supposed to do is the day they just explode the sls's and they and they just put them in a museum and I don't think they're it. actually going to explode them. That would be yeah. bad, but also awesome. Yeah, it's you know, not... just for fun. But yeah, so however, literally four of them will fly, right? Maybe six will fly at a tremendous expense because you can't, It's it would be madness to just stop and wait for Elon Musk to do it, right? You're going to wait on Elon Musk time? You're going to live on his time? No, right? And of course, they've done it on a shoestring. Like, how much has yeah. SpaceX has spent a couple of million dollars to build something that has cost U.S. taxpayers tens of billions? Yeah, and, right. And but when it's all gets, said and done, so so the thing that this makes me think about is Elon Musk is is driven and creative and unrestrained. And one of the things that I have learned from you is that when you work on a unrestricted funds basis, when we do events like this to get funding that comes with the go forth and be awesome and science the expletive out of it, we can do remarkable things. And you and I have both put in countless hours on our own innovating new ideas because we couldn't be bothered to wait for someone to give us yeah. the funding. We just did the thing just to do see it. if it would work. And, and Elon Musk is taking that approach writ large. Mm -hmm. Whereas people who are like, well, we should fund it, we should peer review it, we should get external evaluators, we should do this, we, have all, we need to build the policies, define the regulations, figure out what the reporting strategy is, set the metrics. Yeah. By the time you're done doing all of that, you should have already been done. Yeah, until a starship with 200 settlers from Mars blows up. Yeah. Right? And it becomes the greatest tragedy in in human spaceflight. But, but we had two seven thirty seven maxes come down because of software. Yeah, and, and they shut down the the seventh Boeing announced they're canceling the seven thirty seven max. And and it took them how long to do that? Now, here's here's where I look and I say, okay, we have to take risks, and some companies know how to recover from failure, and some companies put so much effort into I hate the slogan failure is not an option I hate it I hate it I hate it yeah with, failure with, is like failure is the thing you want failure tells with, you you're doing you're on the right track with with curiosity um Dave somewhere over in that corner is a deformed water bottle it's gray can you look for it yeah so so this sits on my my workbench as a reminder so what happened failure is not an option until you enter the dishwasher <laughs> right and then, and then your in your water bottle <coughs> fails and, That's awesome and the irony involved in this water bottle yeah 
with with Mars Curiosity, the the Mars uh, Science Laboratory, MSL. Right, the rover, not the general concept of being right. curious about Mars. The rover has done extraordinary things. It's it's had difficulties. They've had issues. But the hardest thing it did was get to Mars. And everyone knew there was a high chance of kablooey or kaboom yeah. as it impacted the surface. And they put out this fabulous video beforehand. It is still one of my mm -hmm. favorite science communications tools ever. Seven yep. minutes of terror. Seven minutes of terror, yep. And, and they embraced the slogan, dare mighty things. And that's the slogan I want to see, dare mm -hmm. mighty things. Because together, if we just... Yeah step forward working as a community building the bridge beneath ourselves yeah we can do amazing the, things the role i think that nasa plays must play is to be willing to investigate the things that is not that doesn't make any sense for companies to go into right to try new propulsion techniques to experiment with new uh, materials, to to try to solve all of the little problems that are going to come up because, because no one can run a sustainable business trying to do that. Yeah. NASA and, does not need to be in the business of delivering cargo to space. Right. That's and, right. Plenty of suppliers to do that. And th there's things that I look at that the older I get, the more judgy I get and I try very hard to live by the idea of thou shalt not judge but there's a difference between judging humans and judging ideas there are bad ideas and we have already figured out that space is trying to kill you mm -hmm. and reading through the science article on what all happened to Scott Kelly, how there was long-term uh, cognitive degeneration, his vision deteriorated, his immune system deteriorated. Yeah. You and I did a whole series on Astronomy Cast on how bio biological life, like embryos don't always have skin as a result. <laughs> this, we don't know. We don't know. Well, okay, animal embryos that developed. We still don't really know. Some of the research we talked about before was about embryos that had no skin, and those results continue to gross me out. Yeah, we know we know no gravity is bad. But we don't know about right. microgravity, right? Or like like lunar gravity or Martian gravity. Nobody's right. run the experiments to find out if that place. Like, what if it is impossible for human beings to give birth on Mars? Yes. Do you want and, to go live on Mars? And so one of the things that I look at is how funding is distributed. And there's a ton of money that goes to human space flight. And then we have the, the science mission directorate that is divided up into solar, planetary, astro. Uh, so it's helio, solar, sorry, that is helio, planetary, astro, and I want to say there's a fourth but it's gone you were like earth, astrophysics earth earth okay. doesn't count as a planet to nasa Correct. so it's terrestrial helio planetary right. not earth yeah. and all the rest of the universe and what i'm not seeing is where is all the human biology research mm -hmm. that is is funded with the same rigor and intensity as building the machines to carry the humans. Imagine yeah. if we had spent as much money on trying to study humans and other biologics to systematically figure out how do we not die in space with the same rigor with which they're working to build SLS. Yeah. So that uh, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, and not even that, like, like, how are you going to make toilets work and try different kinds of ion engines? And what about nuclear engines? And there's just, there's a thousand different questions that need to be answered. And, and my fate, but the part that shows that NASA does have that spirit is the NIAC group, the NASA's Advanced Innovative Concepts. I love the ideas that they think about there at, at NIAC. Um, I did a great interview with the director uh, a couple of weeks ago and it was just, you know, like 
like they don't want ideas that have been tried out. They want ideas that are weird and yeah. push the limits and and are a unique new way of looking at something. That is that's what we want. And I think that the second this stuff becomes figured out, they should be not wanting. Like like NASA should not be in the giant rocket business. They should be in the we're going to pay for cargo to be lifted to space by any means necessary, right? And and and, and call it there. And it is an amazing future that we don't have that we want. And we're just going to keep talking about it and until we see our future. It's inevitable now. I mean, yeah. it really feels like at this point, the, the boulder is picking up speed, it is rolling downhill. We are seeing a revolution on every front of, of space and technology. And I can't wait to see what happens next. It's a brave new world. And I look forward to reporting it with you, Fraser. I'll be right there. Sounds Let's do it. sounds amazing. Um, All right. So thank you. You've been a trooper showing up to help out. And um, you always hey, make this congrats easy. congrats on almost wrapping up 40 hours. You're, are you into your last hour now? We are in our last hour hour and i would like to invite all of our hangout mods uh to use the discord link to join us here on stream i see people starting to pop on go. in and the mouse is out of reach right. um so i will see you later Fraser. i will drop out hey everybody goodbye everybody donate 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 be part of making this science happen uh Help contribute you, to Fraser. make more of the good things that you want in this world to happen. And if CosmoQuest is one of those, uh, try to give some money to help us uh, continue the projects that we're working on. All right. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. And uh, we'll see you all, uh, whatever happens next. <laughs>